Shalom, everyone. Welcome to the Two Witness Ministry. And I do hope that you have enjoyed the five videos that we produce for you. The one that's coming up next is number six, and it is the name of the Creator. And I am Sister Biffia, and I do hope that you have enjoyed these videos that we produce for you. And have a good Sabbath. And here's Brother Benaya. Shabbat Shalom. Hallelujah, Yahweh. Yet yeah, we're here. We're going to explain the name of the Creator. It's a subject everybody's been wanting. Uh, so much confusion out there. So let's get started. For Yahweh is not unrighteous. He will not forget your work and labor of love which you have shown towards his name. From Hebrews chapter 6 verse 10. Yeah, Satan's ministers continue to sow seeds of discord amongst new believers who are trying to discern truth from falsehood in these confusing last days. So many are questioning the proper way to pronounce the Creator's name so that they can call upon Him in prayer and praise and receive His honor and the gift of eternal life. Yes, things are confusing out there, but the truth is available because Yahweh said it was. He said if you search for the truth and ask for the truth, you will find it. The tre treasure is just hidden in the field. Go look for it, and oftentimes you will stumble over it. Yahweh will not leave you nor forsake you in your search for his truth, for his will and his salvation. The Creator has revealed unto mankind his name long ago. There are not many creators, but only one. Accepting and speaking his name in request for eternal life is absolutely necessary to, in, to gain this inheritance which he offers to you. If you ignore his name, he will ignore your name from the book of life. With this one name comes the correct pronunciation of his name, and this has become a thing of contention over the years by many who want to confuse this vital issue. The Creator's name isn't hidden, although it has been suppressed by those servants of mystery Babylon the Great. The seeker of truth must make the personal effort to seek after the information with discernment. Quote, ask and you shall receive, seek and you will find. Again, this is the purpose for the publication of books down through history, to keep an accurate record of history and the evolution of man's increased knowledge. The facts have been twisted by both Jews and Christians in order to hide, on purpose, the Creator's name from the public. Catholics, Jews, and Protestants have all made excuses for suppressing this most blessed gift to man, the name Yahweh. Yet every dictionary, Bible dictionary, and encyclopedia admits what the true pronunciation of the Creator's name is, as well as what it isn't, such as the rendering Jehovah by Peter Galatinus in 1520. Let's look at the admission and the facts of how the Creator's name was changed over the years according to Jewish tradition and how the Catholic Church has perpetuated this tradition onto believers without their knowledge. The Jews know what the Creator's name is. The Catholic Church and most Protestant denominations know what the Creator's name is, but they won't teach it to their congregations. How can anyone justify suppressing the name of the Creator from those who seek His salvation? In Hosea 4 verse 6 says, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Doesn't anyone think this knowledge could very well be the name of the Creator and His true pronunciation? Many last days prophets want to confuse the issue on the correct pronunciation of this name. And said before, most dictionaries and encyclopedias freely admit to the correct pronunciation of the name of the Creator. Not even scholars are debating this subject. Why should you? Let's just look at the facts. The main reason for the confusion is due to the Jewish Masoretic vowel pointing system and their conspiracy to purposely hide the true pronunciation from the people. This fact is admitted in every encyclopedia. Then people who don't, don't know Hebrew make false assumptions about how Hebrew works and come to false renderings on the Creator's name again such as Peter Galatinus in 1520 who produced the erroneous pronunciation Jehovah for the first time in world history. Before 1520, no one on planet Earth had ever heard the name Jehovah before. It's due to several reasons. Number one, there's no letter J in Hebrew. Number two, even if we dropped the J and used the Yod of the Tetragrammaton for Jehovah, the name is still wrong. There's no letter V in Hebrew either. 
Number three, the Talmudic Jewish rabbinical vowel pointing on the four-letter vowel chetagrammaton does not produce the correct vocalization of the Creator's name, because the ancient Jews used the vowel pointings for Adonai and Elohim, which Peter Galatinus was unaware of this scheme. This was the specific purpose in order to hide the name from the common people. This ignorance on his part contributed to his concoction Jehovah again in 1520. There is a Christian denomination which calls themselves Jehovah's Witnesses. Yet anyone with a basic education in religious history knows that the name Jehovah is only less than 500 years old. Adam, Noah, Abraham, and Moshe, they never heard this name before and they never prayed to Jehovah. Common sense tells us that we should not be praying to anyone or anything except the name used by the ancient patriarchs, such as those mentioned. Even if we drop the J and use the Yod of the Tetragrammaton for Jehovah, the name is still wrong. Let's change the V here back to original Hebrew vowels and you get Yehovah. Did you know that the English language and the alphabet had no letters J or V prior to the 15th century? The letter V was dropped in the 16th century by the apostate Talmudic Jews known as Eastern European Jews or Ashkenazi Jews who speak Yiddish, a butchered dialect of Aramaic Hebrew. This letter V was adopted in the 16th century. Have you ever heard the Hebrew word of praise, Hallelujah? Of course, the universal word of praise known and heard by millions. Everyone has been saying the Creator's name, and yet why do so many get confused about it? Yah is the shortened poetic form of the name Yahweh. Every Bible encyclopedia and dictionary on earth admits this. It's no big secret. Hebrew scholars have no reason to twist these facts. Everyone knows and has said Hallelujah before. Everyone has been speaking the Creator's name. So what's all the confusion and the fuss about? Because false prophets want to cause discord and doubt and confusion in order to divide and conquer and cause disciples to fall away. This is why we are instructed to prove all things in 2 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 21. This sets the disciples on a firm foundation of facts and truth rather than rumor, superstition, and vain traditions of men. Multiple independent and reliable witnesses also help to confirm the truth as well. There are so many various dictionaries and encyclopedias which agree and confirm to the correct pronunciation Yahweh that this subject should not be debated. It was Yahweh 5,000 years ago, it was Yahweh in David's day, and it was pronounced Yahweh in the Messiah's day. Every reputable book agrees that Yahweh was, is, and always will be the correct pronunciation, whether you want to spell it Y-A-H-W-E-H or Y-A-H-W-A-Y or Y-H-W-E-Y, Yahweh. Yahweh said that he doesn't change, and that includes his name, which is to be a memorial for all generations from Psalm 135, verse 13. The third commandment given to Moshe for Israel included the instruction to not hide, alter, or change this name. How can something so simple be so hard for so many to understand? Is this human nature? Rebellion in action? Of course it is. The Jews have were taken into captivity for their rebellion, and it appears that human nature remains rebellious, even among those of the Church of Babylon who make all sorts of excuses about why not to speak and praise his personal name, such as we saw earlier with the Roman Catholic Church. But who would rather replace it with the names of pagan gods and goddesses condemned in the Torah law? Does that make any sense? Maybe people are just confusing themselves as an excuse for not being obedient. If someone has anger towards the Creator because of the bad things that may have befallen them in their lives, it seems that such people might want to mock and strike out at Yahweh by refusing to accept the simplicity of His name. This is a foolish and childish response. This world is under the curse of sin because people refuse to accept even the simple truth that they were designed and created by a wonderful and loving Creator. This world will continue in its slide to destruction and nuclear war because of the mental decisions that they have made and continue to make when they ignore the simplicity of the, of the loving advice of the Creator who said, Do not deny my name. The Jews know the following information, but they will not release this because it makes so much sense to the common man. 
the name of the Creator has actually been given numerous times throughout Scripture. I'm sorry, the definition of the name of the Creator. The definition of the name of the Creator has been given numerous times throughout Scripture. Here are a couple of examples from Hebrews 13, verse 8. The ordained salvation of Yahweh, the same yesterday, today, and forever. From Revelation 4, verse 8. And they did not cease day and night, saying, Kodesh, 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 Abba Yahweh Almighty, who was, is, and is to come. In the above verses, we find the definition of the name of the Creator. Only the Creator can exist throughout all time, and time is also an invention of the Creator. The Creator is not bound by His inventions. Yahweh is not bound by the restraints of time. Therefore, He remains the same, unchanging, yesterday, today, and in the future. As Malachi 3, verse 6 reminds us, For I am Yahweh, I change not. From Revelation 1, verse 8, I am the Aleph and the Ta, the beginning and the end, who was and is, and who is to come, the Almighty. We see this recurring theme throughout the scriptures. He is revealing that he is eternal and without bounds. He therefore also knows the future and has revealed this future to mankind in the prophecies of scripture. These prophecies cannot change because they have already taken place as seen and revealed to us by Yahweh. Now we can grasp and understand why Yahweh's name is pronounced the way it is. Let's see. This definition is based upon the simplicity of two root verbs which compose the four-letter tetragrammaton, yod heh wah -Hey, and its pronunciation. Let's take a look at Yah, which is the root form of the Hebrew verb Hayah, which means in the past, or finished, or completed action, that which is fulfilled, or yesterday's action, or simply was. It is the verb denoting past tense, that which is finished, or done, or completed. The second and latter part of the name, way, is the root form of the Hebrew verb hoe, which means action in the now, present tense, today, or is. The future designation of the name comes from the first letter of the tetragrammaton. This is the Hebrew letter yod, as you see here in yellow. This denotes future action and is a signal or sign of future tense on the name of, as well. All Hebrew verbs beginning with the letter Yod denote specifically future action. Therefore, the name encompasses all times, past, present, and future. This name is exclusive and is not used by any others for any other reason. This name is unique because nothing in all creation can be existent at all times from beginning to end. Only Yahweh, the creator of the spirit world, the creator of outer space and the universe, and our heavens and planet earth. Only the creator can have and should have this name. It makes perfect sense and shows again that in Hebrew, names have specific meanings and describe the character of the one being named or called. Yahweh gave specific names to his called out people because they would fulfill a certain role in mankind's history such as Yahweh changing Abram's name to Abraham, as he was appointed to be the progenitor of many, many nations. Yahweh then changed Sarai's name to Sarah, meaning princess, as she would be the mother who would bear this royal lineage, including the promised king, the Mashiach, Yasha to come. Hebrew is the language of heaven because it is the language of the Creator, and he has revealed to mankind what his name is from the beginning. Will you give praise to his name? Hallelujah, Yahweh.